Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, August 10th. Okay, so we have a little bit of a wackadoodle day here taking place, if I do say so myself. Reason being, the moon in Libra energy went void, of course, last evening at 5.46 p.m. on August 9th, and we are going to spend the bulk of the day in this void until 6.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when the moon finally shifts into Scorpio energy. Now, I have a lot to say about this. First of all, the transition from Libra energy to Scorpio energy is always a very unwelcomed one because now we got to do the shadow work. Now we have to kind of move inward. We have to be introverted enough, real, raw, and vulnerable enough to unearth the darkest parts of our subconscious, of our programming, of our conditioning, of our mentality, of our emotions, of our soul and our spirit in order to make the major change, the major transformation in our inner realm that needs to take place prior to us making the changes out in our physical world. Now, there's that. The moon being void for this whole entire time is putting us in a very shaky, very uncertain, very unstable type of disposition, which of course, none of us really enjoy. On top of that, we're building towards the first quarter moon that will be taking place in the Scorpio energy on the 12th. So the minute that we dip our toe in that Scorpio energy, suddenly we're going to get ants in our pants. Why? Because the first quarter moon is going to be the pivot point, the crisis point, the action point, the decision point that we have been kind of back and forth about since the new moon in Leo energy. Now to add a little bit more of a layer of let's call it uncertainty, instability, and confusion, Saturdays are ruled over by Saturn. Saturn, of course, is the Lord of Karma. He's retrograde in Pisces energy. And this is going to put us in a little bit of a funk anyways. So to have the funkiness, to have the seriousness, to have the somberness, to have the weight of the world weighing on our shoulders where the to-do list is concerned, where the roles and responsibilities on us to make a change in our physical realms are concerned, we're just going to be going through it. I'll just say that. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to be a bad day. But it does mean that we are going to feel like we are kind of, I'm going to say that there's something going on that we can't put our finger on that we can't identify. You know how there's like this nagging voice inside your head where it's like, am I forgetting something? Should I be doing something else? You know, it's almost like you have a list of things to do, but you're so overwhelmed that you're in a state of paralysis about it and nothing gets done. This is the type of day that we're in for now. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're all, you know, quote unquote, victims to this particular energy. We can flip it as long as we're aware of it. But just know that we are in for a very long day with 13 different aspects, 11 of those involving the moon, a long day of back and forth, back and forth, teeter totter, teeter totter. Eventually, we are going to get those scales under the Libra influence semi balanced and then we move out of the shallow end of our thoughts and our emotions and we go all the way to the deep end when we hit that Scorpio energy. So I say today is going to be quite the day, but out of that, there are some positive aspects. Out of this, there are going to be some realizations. And from here, we are going to gain the clarity that we need in order to make that choice point, that pivot point, that action point in a couple of days when that first quarter moon actually hits. So let's dive into it. Now, keeping in mind, the moon is still in Libra energy, but it is void. So we're, again, not as anchored, not as sure. And we're really amplifying that Libra indecisiveness. Okay, so the moon in Libra, then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. What does the Libra energy and Taurus energy have in common? That's right. Venus rules over both of them. Where's Venus at, you may ask? Well, Venus is in Virgo. We're all business here. Analyzing, reevaluating, picking things apart in order to get our values, our priorities straight, to identify what we want, what we need, what we desire, what isn't working, what is working, who and what needs to stay, needs to go. Venus is doing all of that, okay? So she's in the background sorting things out. The moon interacting with Uranus in this way is bringing a buzz 
a strike of lightning to our central nervous systems, to our mental plane. Suddenly, we're seeing an option, an opportunity, a perspective that we haven't quite seen as of yet. And this is opening us up to understand where it is that guess what? We can make major changes without feeling the pressure, without feeling like we are in this urgency type of situation. We can go low and slow. We can take one step at a time. We can identify in our physical realm what needs the time, energy, and attention the most. And we can take little tiny baby steps because baby steps count in order to build a better, stronger routine, foundation, relationship dynamic, first within ourselves, then within everybody else's relationship dynamics that we're involved in. And we can start seeing a little bit, I'm going to say, of a greater path forward. We're starting to put the puzzle pieces together. And it's not such a bad view from up here. But of course, things are not going to last that well, that high vibe, that peachy keen, because this is what this day is going to be. It's the cha-cha-cha. The moon in Libra energy, void, is going to semi-square Venus. Venus rules over the Libra energy. Venus is in Virgo energy. Suddenly, we're not so sure. Suddenly, when we get that glimpse of the futuristic path, vision, option, opportunity that we now have to build, that we now have to create for ourselves. Suddenly, we're not so sure. Suddenly, we're focused on all the things that could go wrong. We're focused on all of the things that we shouldn't even have to be dealing with because this was not in our plans to be dealing with. Suddenly, we are not so safe, not so secure, not so certain that the wants, needs, and desires that we just realized that we had are the best thing for us. This is essentially when the dark force energies kick in, that ego programming, we start talking ourselves out of our goals, our visions, our dreams, because again, that dark force energy wants to keep us in a state of, of paralysis and does not want us to activate our creator abilities to be happy, to create a realm of reality that not only looks good, but that feels good as well. So then the sun shining very brightly in this Leo energy is going to make a very tough interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma ruling over roles, responsibility, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, who of course is retrograde in Pisces energy. So this is going to put ants in our pants. We're agitated. We feel like we just cannot relax. We're trying to relax. We're trying to enjoy ourselves. We're trying to focus on the positives. We're trying to give ourselves a permission slip to think about the future without the urgency and the pressure to actually do anything about it. But it's not working. Okay. We feel like we are on edge. And there's no real reason for that. We're finding it very hard to pinpoint why it is that we actually feel this way. We actually feel like we're missing something, like we're forgetting something, like something's going on that we should be focused on, but we have no clue what that is. We're very confused, okay? And FOMO, okay, fear of missing out, FOMO is a real thing, and we're starting to feel like that. We're, delusion, we're delusional at this point in the game of thinking that, guess what? Everybody else is happier than I am. Everybody else got their shit together more than I do. Everybody knows what they're doing in their life. I have no clue. I'm confused. I feel like I'm backtracking. I feel like I'm not on the right timeline. I feel like I'm not in the right space, not in the right circumstance. Again, this is how the dark force energy tries to talk you out of your power, tries to talk you out of your goals, your visions, your dreams. So we're going to sit in that funk for a little tiny minute. And then what happens? We cha-cha-cha again. We have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in this Virgo energy. She is going to be making a very positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who was retrograde in this Aquarius energy. Let's talk about this for a second. Pluto's retrograde in Aquarius energy is supposed to be highlighting for us where the power struggle is still alive and well, where the tug of war is still alive and well. First of all, within us, between our heart and our head, between the old version of self, the new version of self, between our ego selves, our higher selves, and then it get, gets projected outwardly. So now it's the power struggle between me and those that I love, the power struggle between, you know, me and society. The power struggle that exists in the external realm because the power struggle is alive and well within us. If there was no power struggle within us, we would not see that projection out in our outer realm. The exterior realm acts as a mirror. Okay, so anything that is alive and well within ourselves in our inner realm gets projected outwardly 
gets mirrored back to us so that we can do the work to unearth the parts within our programming, within our conditioning that allows this particular tug of war to happen. Now, Pluto intensifies things. So we know we're going to feel it. Okay. We have to feel it in order to heal it. What are we feeling? Well, because Venus is involved and yes, she's helping us out in this Virgo energy, removing some emotions so that we can just deal with the matter of facts. We can deal with life as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. This is going to turn the volume all the way up on our heart space, feeling those intense thoughts, those intense emotions, feeling that tug of war, feeling that power struggle, but we're coming out on top. Why? Because we have an aha moment. We have an aha moment between our heart and our head on some sort of plan, some sort of strategy that now we feel we are comfortable in approaching, comfortable in trying, comfortable in experimenting with, especially where relationships are concerned and money matters are concerned. And let me also just remind you, the relationship situation that we have externally is based off of the relationship dynamic that we got going on with ourselves. And the financial situation that we find ourselves in in the physical realm is merely a reflection of the energetic exchange that we're having within ourselves. So when we feel of worth, of value, deserving, the external matrix is going to give us those validations in the monetary currency that of course this matrix is based off of. We know as light beings, as soul beings, that the real currency is energy. So the energy exchange that we harbor against ourselves or for ourselves manifests in the financial situations that are either, you know, coming at us with grace and ease or coming at us with a little bit of struggle. Use that to look inward, to see where it is that there's a part of self not feeling love, not feeling worthy, not feeling of value. And maybe that's why you're currently in the situation that you are with finances this is going to highlight again this is a good vibe so we got to sit in it we are empowered we're feeling in control we're feeling like we can have a good vision to try something differently to come up with a path a plan a strategy on how we're going to find peace harmony and balance not only within ourselves but within us in relation to our external realm where relationships and money matters are concerned so we're going to cha-cha-cha again. We just had a good vibe. Now we're going to have a not so nice one. The moon in Libra energy going to sit across from directly oppose, create tension, create conflict with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in this Aries energy, helping us with this new identity, helping us anchor in this new version of self. Chiron retrograde in Aries energy is operating from a warrior type of mood and attitude to examine the parts within ourselves, mental health, emotional health, physical health, spiritual health, where the problems are still alive and well, and we're not dusting it under the rug anymore. Okay, we're not turning a blind eye to it anymore. We're calling it out like, well, there's a problem. You're preventing me from moving on. You're preventing me from feeling confident, right? That part of self, you, we have to focus on you. We have to heal you. We have to fix you. We have to integrate you. We have to be operating in our wholeness. And you, my friend, you, this part of self is holding us back. Okay. So now emotionally speaking, we're at odds with ourselves. We're not feeling good. We're not feeling like we want to grow. Suddenly we just had a realization on where it is that we can try something new, experiment with a new plan, a new strategy to find peace, harmony, happiness, and balance in our lives. Once again, we're, we're operating from an empowered sense of self. And then all of a sudden what happens we start picking ourselves apart. We're not feeling so hot. We're not feeling so confident. We're not feeling like we're able and capable of doing all of the things that we just realized that we have to do in order to create a different result. Now we're getting down on ourselves. Now we're really beating ourselves up in a certain kind of way. And we're not going to sit in that for very long. We're going to cha-cha-cha again into a positive aspect the moon in Libra energy then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn so Saturn being the Lord of Karma normally if this was a negative interaction we'd be getting a harsh reality check we would be sitting in that negative narrative but this is a positive one so we're essentially we're getting ourselves out of this funk we're definitely seeing how strong we are because we're getting a little bit of a let's shake your head let's bang your head against a wall and knock some sense into you 
in order to actually see yourself from a clear vision, a clear lens, a clear perspective. We just broke ourselves down. We just beat ourselves up. Now Saturn's like, listen, I'm the one that casts out these reality checks. I didn't tell you to beat yourself up. I think you're doing great, okay? You've had a lot to deal with. We are deconstructing the old version of self, the old realm and reality based off of the old way of believing in yourself. Now, you got to give yourself what credit is due. You have to build yourself up. You have to give yourself the pat on the back. So Saturn is essentially throwing us a lifeline right now and saying, okay, you want to get serious about change? Let's get serious about change. Where do you want to start? Let's start with the belief within yourself. You're not a loser. You're not a waste of space. You're not, you know, deserving of all these horrible things. But if you keep telling yourself that, then I'm going to continue to dish it out until you can't take it anymore. You break down to the bottom of the barrel and you rise up as the phoenix that you are supposed to be, right? So for once, Saturn is giving us some tough love life lessons in the most loving of ways possible. That was a good vibe. We're going to sit in that for a couple of hours. Then we're going to cha-cha-cha back into the funk. The moon in this Libra energy, still void, of course, going to make a very harsh aspect with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. We kick the day off with a positive interaction, giving us clarity, giving us different perspective, opening us up to new options and opportunities. Now, because Saturn just gave us a little bit of a tough love life lesson and built us up. This is foreign to us. This is unfamiliar to us. Suddenly, we're confused as all shit. So normally, Uranus would bring in some clarity, but this is not a good interaction. So he's bringing in the confusion. He's bringing in our resistance to change. He's bringing this, let's call it darker programming, darker narrative. You can't do that. Yeah, I know Mr. Karma himself told you you could, but you can't do that. You know you can't. Why? Because you don't have the vision. Why? Because you're limiting yourself in your capabilities. You're limiting yourself in the possibilities. Uranus is kind of here to say, okay, uh, you want to act like you're insignificant. You want to act like you don't have power. You don't want to act like you're, you're not in control. I'll give you situations to validate that, but I really don't think you want any more of those situations. So now, emotionally speaking... We're kind of closed off. We're kind of confused. We're again, flip-flopping on this indecisive scale that the Libra energy puts us on. And so we are gaining a lot of, I'm going to say energy that we are now choosing to feed into anxiety, into doubts, into fears, into insecurities. But we're not going to stay in that energy for very long. We're cha-cha-chaing again into a positive interaction. Now, it's not the most positive. It's kind of awkward, but it's better than a funky one. The moon in this Libra energy, still void, going to make an awkward interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, who, of course, is in Gemini energy. So this is air on air action, but we're not really gaining a whole lot of clarity. We're also not falling victim to the old patterns, the old behaviors, the old inner narrative either. This is our best attempt at trying to align with a path, a goal, a vision, a dream. Mars is here to try and inspire us, to motivate us, to keep us kind of hell bent, damn well and determined to not go back to some of the things that we just fought our way away from. But that moon in Libra, I'm telling you, just when we decide we're going ahead, no, nope, we're stopping. Just when we decide we're going back, no, nope, we're not going back either. Just when we decide this is what we want, nope, maybe I don't, maybe I don't. This is what I mean. Today is a back and forth kind of day. So yes, we're trying to be motivated. We're trying to have the best narrative. We're trying to have the best perspective about our options and opportunities to move forward. But we're not going to sit in that for very long. Why? Well, now the moon in Libra energy still void is reaching the 29 critical crisis karmic degree of this Libra in energy. So what does this mean? It means that we're going to have an interaction with Neptune. Why? Because Neptune is retrograde in his placement of power in this Pisces energy at a 29 critical karmic degree. And so what we get here is a certain level of confusion, a certain level of wanting to run away, wanting to hide, wanting to curl up in a ball, not wanting to deal with life. Just when we realize where we're trying to get motivated and inspired and excited to move forward, suddenly the Libra energy pumps the brakes. We're not going anywhere. Why? Because we don't have a clear vision. We don't have all the details. 
Okay, so maybe you need to take a leap of faith and trust the path, the plan, the strategy, trust your higher self, trust the greater, grander plan that again, you can gain that clarity once you start actually moving in a different direction. Are we going to get that? No, we're going to sit in the funk. We're going to be so overwhelmed with emotion, so overwhelmed with thought, so overwhelmed with indecision that we are literally going to find ourselves in a state of paralysis. This is when the moon shifts into Scorpio energy and as dark, as intense, as overwhelming as the Scorpio energy can be, at least we're anchored into something. We're no longer void, which means that we're in a fixed water sign. Fixed energy helps us to stabilize. The water energy is first going to cleanse us, purify us, try to get some of that gunk off of us. Then it is going to show us where it is that we're having a certain emotion, a certain vision, a certain intuitive type of pull to a certain path and direction. And then we're going to realize over the course of the next couple of days, what we have to change within us, what we have to transform in our emotions, in our mental plane, in our soul, in our spirit to get our heart and head in alignment. Why? Because our heart and head have to be in alignment before we can engage the physical body to take action to make moves out in the physical realm. So we're locking into the Scorpio energy, 6.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're going to feel it, okay? I can guarantee you, you're going to feel it. We sit in this particular shift for about an hour, and then we have the moon in Scorpio energy getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Pluto, Pluto rules over the Scorpio energy. So this is going to be intense. This is, you know, when I say Scorpio is intense, like I'm not joking, okay? It is intense all around. But you want to take that intensity and then get into the boxing ring and fight it out with the ruler over Scorpio energy? Okay. So Pluto, he's the great transformer himself. He's retrograde in Aquarius energy. We get this square because, of course, we're working with a fixed water sign, such as Scorpio, and a fixed air sign, such as Aquarius. A square is going to highlight conflict, is going to highlight the power struggle, the tension. Why? Because a square highlights where it is that we're going through some growing pains. Okay, what are we going through? We are going through identifying the power struggle within. That's what Pluto's retrograde in Aquarius energy is all about. We are now acting as the observer to emotionally detach, to see ourselves, the programming, the conditioning of the ego self, the in intuition, the clarity, the excitement, the inspiration of the higher self. And now we have to decide who we are giving more weight to. Okay, so yes, there's going to be some dark thoughts. There's going to be some heavy emotions. We have to feel it in order to heal it. The first part of the moon in Scorpio needs to be very clear on what needs to stay, what needs to go, what, needs, what we need to purge. And that means having full focus on the heaviness, the weight of our emotions, of our mental plane, and where it is that these particular hangups are preventing us from seeing the greater, grander picture, seeing where it is that we have the opportunity to break away, seeing where it is that we have the opportunity to flip the script. So does it feel good? No, it's not supposed to, but it's going to be super helpful, especially in the days to come. So we're going to continue the cha-cha. We are now moving into a positive interaction to help us out of this funk. The moon in Scorpio going to make a positive interaction with the sun in Leo energy. Let's talk about this for a second. We have fixed water, Scorpio. We have fixed fire, Leo. So we know that whatever's popping off is going to help us feel a little bit more stable, a little bit more sane, a little bit more with it. Any time that we have the moon and the sun coming together in any kind of interaction, there's going to be an emotional awareness. There's going to be an aha moment, light bulb pinging, pinging, pinging off, giving us a little bit of clarity, giving us a little bit of insight where it is that our emotions are changing in order for us to do the hard thing. Okay, so the sun shining very brightly in this Leo energy, trying to trigger and activate boldness, bravery, courage, the boss up lion energy in order for us to be bold, brave, and courageous enough to actually make the changes that we know that we need to make. Emotionally speaking, the moon and Scorpio, we're realizing those darker emotions that just got triggered with that interaction, that square with Pluto, 
where we have power and control over them to flip the script, where we're bold and brave and courageous enough to tackle them head on, do the shadow work in order to actually rewrite that emotional perspective, disposition, and mental plane into something more positive. The moon is then going to make a awkward but semi-positive interaction with Jupiter. Okay, so Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings, basically the accumulated wisdom that we've learned through our tough love life lessons. He's in Gemini energy divided on the choices, the options, the decisions that we want to kind of make at this point. He is also pushing the boundaries of our mental plane, of our inner dialogue, of our inner narrative, of our perspectives, our understanding and our ability to see the forest past the trees. Okay. This is going to bring in a little bit of optimism. We're feeling good. We feel like we're putting the bulk of the last couple of days behind us. We feel almost like a brand new person in the emotional sense, meaning again, major change, major transformation, Scorpio energy. There's going to be a total shift in our mood and our attitude. Jupiter bringing the optimism, bringing the confidence, bringing our ability to see where it is that we have an opportunity for growth where it is that we have learned certain skills, certain talents in our past, in our life experiences that we could be kind of implementing in this present moment in the here and now to start planning and strategizing a well thought out plan for how we're going to move on and move forward. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Scorpio sextiling beautiful interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who of course is retrograde in his rulership in Virgo energy. We love Scorpio and Virgo energy working together. Why? Well, first of all, Scorpio energy is the detective of the Zodiac. Virgo energy, we are picking apart, analyzing, evaluating the smallest details of the quote unquote crime scene, let's call it. Now, the Scorpio energy does the detective work in order to unearth the truth, unearth hidden details. The Virgo ener energy is going to dissect it very quickly, process it in a very fast way in order for us to compute what we need to see, what we need to understand from this new perspective. So we have the moon, our emotions. We have Mercury, our headspace working together to really pick ourselves apart, our train of thinking apart, our emotions apart, our circumstances apart, so that we can get the script in front of us. We can make the edits. We can change our inner dialogue, change our inner narrative to something more empowering, and then have the strong, powerful emotions to actually back it up. Our heart and our head are working together to get on the same page, to come to a certain understanding, to gain a bigger, broader perspective and vision on what needs to be done. Even more than that, in the realm of communication, we are spitting facts. There is, I'm not going to say there's not emotion involved because Scorpio energy is very passionate, very intense where emotions are concerned. The Virgo energy is highly critical, super judgmental without a lot of emotion. We're just spitting facts. We're spitting truth. So if you find yourself in a heart to heart conversation that needs to be had, it is going to be a very intense conversation, but it is going to be more matter of fact, spit and truth than it is over emotional and getting out of control. So either way, we are ending the day on the brightest note that we will have to experience throughout all of these aspects. And of course, we are setting ourselves up for a much more stable Sunday.